everyone, it's Fleur here. I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to do some beautiful pearl knotting. So pearl knotting is a very traditional way of actually using your pearls and knotting them. So it means that they have this beautiful fluidity to them, which makes them so much more beautiful to wear. You can see each pearl has got a knot in between it. And in the kit, you're going to get these gorgeous pearls and your silk and your beautiful magnetic clasp. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started and show you how to make this beautiful necklace. So there's a few things that we need. We're going to need um, a macrame board. So I've just got a small macrame board here. Apologies, it's a little bit dirty. Um, a knotting awl, we're gonna use the knotting awl to actually knot the pearls with. We're gonna need a pair of flat nose pliers um, just to be able to crush the, uh, sorry, not crush the crimp bead, um, close the crimp cover, because we're gonna use a crimp cover on the first and last knot. We've got some um, hyper cement glue here. We've got our silk, our pearls, and our clasp that come in the actual pack itself, in the, in the kit itself. And I've got a few little extra things here. So in this little tub, I've got a couple of four mil beads, four mil rose, uh, rose uh, gold beads, some little bits of French wire, and I'll just see if I can take one of those out to show you. So we only need a centimeter, so you can see there. We only need a centimeter of each one for either side, so two centimeters of your French wire. Now I've got silver because I don't actually have any rose gold or copper colored um, here in my studio, so you'll have to forgive me for that. And I've got two rose gold stone and silver um, crimp covers, just like I said, to cover the first and the last pearl. So let's just move all this out of the way. And I'm going to use my um, macrame board to knot on. So I'm gonna keep those pearls there. I'm gonna bring my little, little lid of everything that I've got here and my silk. So the first thing we need to do is have a quick look at the silk. So it's a number four silk. Um, it's a 0.6 in diameter, which means that um, if you think of your wire, all your 0.6 wires go through the majority of the pearls that you're maker, so you're absolutely fine with that. So the number four is the smallest size pearl that it should work with, but we know that obviously the pearls are drilled slightly differently. So this goes through these beautiful pearls perfectly. Now the needle is tucked underneath on the back. So if I just take that out there, there's your needle. So you can you see, here's your needle there. And what we need to do is we need to take the whole two meters off of the card. And once we've taken all the two meters off the card, then we can start to have a little look at the silk and make sure that it's okay to use. So we're gonna stretch the silk now because silk naturally does stretch. So we're gonna stretch it now to make sure that it doesn't stretch as much when we're wearing our pearls. So I never stretch the end with the needle attached to it. So there's the needle there. Never stretch that section. So I'm gonna move that to the side. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just coming through. I'm just gonna move these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just coming through and I'm just stretching each part of the silk and you can see straight away it's taking some of those creases out. Now the other thing you could do is you could if you wanted to um, iron this on a cool heat with a damp tea towel over the top of it. Never iron silk directly because you'll melt, well you'll just destroy it. Um, it doesn't like the heat that much. So a cool iron um, with a damp tea towel over the top or you can immerse this in water and then hang it to dry, but it must be hung vertically. Don't pop it on a pile on the top of your radiator because that's, um, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna take the creases out. So I now know that this is all stretched and I know because I've put it through my hands, there's no nicks in this at all. So I know it's not gonna snap on me. So it's done two jobs. It's stretched it and I've just checked it for the quality as well. So the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna just move our silk to the side, making sure we don't knot it. We're gonna look at our pearls now. So we've got this beautiful string of pearls, which is enough to make a gorgeous necklace or a couple of bracelets if you want, okay? Now what we need to do is we need to cut 
them off of this temporary strand. Now, if you try and cut right at the very beginning here, next to that first knot, what can happen is you can scratch the pearl. So what I try and do is I try to stretch and try and make a little gap that I can get my scissors in, in between the first and second pearl, okay? So I've made that little gap and then I can go in and just snip that away. Now, sometimes what can happen is this first pearl and the knot can get stuck together and they, it won't come out. Now, a lot of people um, will then discard that pearl, but that could be the difference between making the pearl necklace long enough for the person to, work, uh, to wear. Sorry. So what you can do is, if it gets stuck, just pop it into some water. It's just some warm water, and what that will do is it will swell the fibres of this temporary strand out, and it will then be easier to remove it. But in this case, we can just take that off. Now I'm just going to take a few of these pearls, just so I can show you how to do the knotting technique. Move those to the end, and I'm just going to move those into the top corner. I'm just going to turn this around so you can see. There we go. So there's my pearls there that I'm going to use. Now if you've got a specific order or anything like that, you're better off putting these on a bead board and just making sure that you have the correct order that you're, you're working with. Okay, so let's bring our silk back in into view. We're going to take our needle and the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to bring this little lid over with all my things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on one of my rose gold beads. Now the reason I put this on it's just so I don't have to ream the first and last pearl. Okay, so I'm going to put that on, I'm going to bring it all the way down so it's near the end and there you can see it's just sitting there quite close to the end. We don't want it too close to the end because we don't want it to slip off. The next thing we're going to do then is take some of our um, French wire so a centimetre of French wire is perfect. We can just take that out of there. I find it easier to leave it on the board and then pick it up. If you find it's difficult to pick it up, it may be that if you've cut it with your flush cutters, you've actually squashed the first loop. I find cutting it with um, my scissors so much easier. Okay. So I'm gonna now bring that all the way down. So again, you can see I'm holding the French wire in my, in my fingers so that it's not going to get caught on anything or it's not going to start to separate. So I've now got my French wire and my bead in place. I can then go and get my beautiful clasp. So in this case, it's this gorgeous magnetic clasp and I'm going to put the needle through one of the loops on the end. So you can see there. Bring that down closer. Now I try and take all the silk out. Don't be tempted to try and go through that little seed bead, that bead to start with. Get them all really close together, okay? So that you can, your, your silk's not going to start to knot. So what I'm gonna do now is, this is the tail end of my silk. So you can see that the, sort of like the line that they've gone on, is they've gone on with the metal bead, the um, French wire, and then my clasp. So what I'm going to do now is going back towards the tail end. So remember, this is the tail end here. I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to go through that metal bead. Okay. And I'll bring that all the way down again. Don't pull this silk too quickly. We don't want it to start to knot or anything like that. Now at this point, we need to make sure that our French wire is going to sit in that little loop. So if I just bring it there, can you see now how I've got half of it on one side and half of it on the other? Now what I wanted to do now is just push that little bead into place and you can see that that's now gone round like a little horseshoe and it's now protecting the silk from the edge of the clasp, okay? Now if we've used too much of the tail of silk at this point, what we can do is we can start to eke it through so that we don't waste too much of our silk but you just spend a little bit longer on that section, just making sure that you haven't got too much here that you're going to waste. So what I've got now is I've got two ends that I can now tie a knot in. So it's just an overhand knot that I'm going to tie. So I'm gonna go around once and through and pull tight. Okay, 
So there's my first knot, just making sure that my French wire still looks nice and neat. And again, go around again with my second knot and tighten. So that's now attached my clasp to my silk, okay? With my silk protected by the French wire. So what I can do now is get my little bit of hyper cement glue. Now, when it comes to glues, you can't use any glue that's super because that will rot through your silk. So it needs to be a jewelry specific glue. I love this hypo cement because it's so directional with that fine nozzle. And what we're going to do is we're gonna pop a little bit of glue on the actual knot itself. And then can you see here the tail end? I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue up there. So when that dries, what will happen is the, um, the it will cut through nice and neatly and not actually make sort of like a, a halo of fuzz so i just pop the lid back on because it can decide to go everywhere never squeeze that kind of tube because it does go everywhere other glues that you can use are your um e6000 that's absolutely fine as well so what we would do now is we would take our little crimp cover now because when we when this dries now in an ideal world we'd let that dry a little bit but we haven't really got time in a demo but I would let that dry completely before I put my crimp and my crimp uh, my crimp cover over there but just for um speed let's just pop the crimp cover over that final knot okay so we've got I haven't cut the end off yet I'll just put the crimp cover over the final knot that's there okay so that crimp cover now is in place if i just lay that down for you so you can see so the crimp cover is in place and it's covering the very first knot which means that if there is a little halo of um silk when i cut the cut the end the tail end off it's not going to sort of like ruin the look of the piece okay so like i say in an ideal world we would let that dry let that glue dry and then we would put our crimp cover on and cut the tail end off now i'm going to leave the tail end on because what you don't want to do is you never want to cut any silk or any material really when the uh, glue is still wet because like we said about that first pearl that gets stuck sometimes on the temporary strand as soon as you get any fibers wet they swell up so when they swell up what will happen is that knot could come undone again so we don't want that to happen so leave it till it's completely dry but i'm just going to just so you can see the aesthetics of what it will look like i'm just going to close that crimp cover up and when you're closing the crimp cover just nice nice and slowly just eke them together don't try and sort of like squash it and i always try and go side to side so i can see it closing and then just very lightly, just squeezing around. If you do it too quickly, you ruin the um, sphere shape of that crimp cover. Okay, so that's now in place. Uh, like I say, we've got that little tail. I'll just cut that a little bit shorter so it's not in your view. So now we can get onto our actual knotting. So we've got our um, clasp attached to our silk with our first knot covered. So what we can do now is take our first pearl, pop the needle through the first pearl, bring that all the way down till it reaches that crimp cover, okay? Now we're gonna do an overhand knot. Now I like to do a large overhand knot. So I've put the pearl in the palm of my hand with the, with the um, clasp. I'm bringing it all the way to the top. And you see on the top of my index finger, there's a cross now. So I'm gonna put my thumb over the cross now my working strand is at the back of my hand towards my wrist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that through and create just an overhand knot, okay? Now when I lay this down on the board, you can see that I have a cross at the top and a loop at the bottom, okay? Now with my knotting all, I'm gonna put that right into my macrame board now if you don't have a macrame board you can use anything like um your kumahimo disc or anything that's like a self-healing foam that's quite deep you don't want to use a sponge because you can then bring all the sort of like little filaments of the sponge into the knot so i've got that in place now so if i just turn that very slightly all those pearls have decided to roll away if i just turn that slightly you can see that that knot 
knotting all is right in the middle okay now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this knot tight now if it starts to get too tight around the knotting all just loosen it a little bit okay and then just keep eking that knot through now this has gone a little bit tighter than I wanted just because it fell off the edge of the board but that's fine it's good to see that um, you can still make it work if the knot does tighten a little bit so again I've got that knotting all and the knot and the pearl very close together okay I'll just bring that back into the center so you can see okay so I'm just gonna pop this back down now to get this nice and tight what we need to do is we need to ratchet so I'm pushing that knot nice and tight against that knotting all okay now I will I will turn it again in a second it's just very difficult to change the camera angle at the moment so apologies for that okay I'm going to bring that next pearl into place so you can see now I've got the pearl that's here which is already sort of like in place my knot which is around my knotting all and then this is my loose pearl here okay now what I need to do now is take the silk in the palm of my hand okay so it's coming over this is my um, right hand so this is my dominant hand it's coming over my right hand over the last three fingers and I'm going to hold it between my thumb and my first finger okay and I'm holding the opposite pearl the other way okay so what I'm going to do is I'm pushing those two pearls together and I'm going to pop my hands over the top and take out that knotting all so we should now be able to see what we're doing okay so again silk over the last three fingers of your dominant hand push those two pearls together so there's no gap between them and then just pull that silk a little bit with your last three fingers and then what you can do then is give it a final push and there we've got our first knot in place so I'm going to do that again so overhand knot lay it down on the board with the cross at the top and the loop at the bottom I should move it up just a little bit so you can see it knotting all into the middle and as you tighten this knot so it's tightening the end with the needle on it so I can see there I'm tightening that I'm going to ratchet that around now that ratcheting makes sure that those pearl, this pearl here is very very close to that knotting all you can see there's no gap at all between that knotting all and the pearl okay I can then take my needle and take my next pearl pop my next pearl in place okay so my next pearl's in place make sure that it's nice and tight so again I've got the silk over my last three fingers and I'm just pushing that pearl nice and tight hand over the top of the pearls take out the knotting all okay and then what we can do again silk over the last three fingers of your dominant hand using your thumb and your first fingers almost like pincers so you're pushing them together so there's no gap at all and then you're going to tighten that silk if there's a gap at this point then your knot will tighten in the in that gap so there'll be a gap either side okay and then what we can do is give that a final push down with our fingers and there we've got our next knot in place so I'm just going to do one more for you so overhand knot all the way round cross on the top thumb over just to hold it in place silk coming through from the wrist to the fingertips laying it down again same formation cross at the top loop at the bottom pop in your knot in all tighten that up now at this point it's not very tight so that's when we have to do our ratchet motion up to the top so when you're ratcheting it's because the cross is at the top of here okay so when you ratchet that silk around what it's doing is it's tightening it via that cross section at the top so we had the cross at the top and the loop at the bottom taking our next pearl 
placing this onto the needle all the way down. Okay, silk over the last three fingers, using your fingers as pincers, just pushing it towards that knotting or make sure it's nice and tight, hand over the top of the pearl so they don't move when I take that knotting all out. Now you can see that that knot is still really close to this static part. This, this pusher pearl here, the one that's going to push the knot together, is far away and it doesn't matter. What we need to do now, and you see this gap that's here, okay? If I was to tighten this knot now, if I was to pull the end with the needle on, that knot will move towards this pearl because as a knot tightens, it slips up rather than going towards the actual piece. So, silk over our last three fingers, using our thumb and our first finger from each hand as like little claws. We're gonna push those two pearls together so that there's no gap between them. Eek that um, silk through your fingers that are over, uh, your last three fingers, just so you can feel it grip and tighten, and then give that a final push. And there we've got some beautiful pearl knots. So you can, you can see there, I've got those lovely pearl knots. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna protect those pearls from each other. If this necklace ever snapped, it would make sure that it would mean that only one pearl would ever be lost. So what we can do now is we're going to show you how to do the other end of the, um, of the clasp. So obviously I've only got a very small piece here, but you would carry on. So I'm just gonna take that part off of there. Now, to finish this piece off, we never put a knot on the last pearl. So always make sure that you never knot the last pearl in place. We're then going to repeat what we did before. So I'm just gonna bring these little pieces over. I've got an extra little bit of uh, French wire there. Let's just move that over to the top, okay? So the first thing we put on is our metal seed bead. Okay, and we let that go all the way down to the bottom. So that's there. We're then gonna pop on our French wire. And again, letting it sit onto the board and let the needle keep hold of the French wire in your thumb and your first finger. So it's there just in my thumb and my first finger. Let that come all the way down. So it's near, near to the end. Again, take the other part of your clasp you go through the loop on the other part of your clasp. And again, we'll let that go all the way down. And then we're gonna go back through, I'll just straighten that up for you. We're gonna go back through the metal seed bead towards the main necklace, so what we've just knotted, okay? So all the way back through there. Bring the needle through. You can see what I'm doing is I'm just holding this silk that's nearer to the um, to the little end of my clasp, just so it doesn't knot, it doesn't get knotted as it's going. So again, make sure that we can get that little bit of French wire so it's half in the clasp. And just let that horse shoe around. And what you can do, just take your time just to make sure that it, it sits in there nicely. Because this is obviously near a clasp like this as well as where it's going to take a lot of wear and tear. I'm just going to move it a little bit closer to me so I can just ease that through. Now what may have happened with this little bit of French wire is it may have just got a little tiny bit of wire that's sticking out the end. Obviously the diameter of French wire that you use as well is very dependent on the clasp that you're going through or the jump ring that you're going through. So just make sure that it's got enough room to wiggle that through. So you can see now that's gone through there nicely. And again, just take your time with that bit. Just make sure that it's right in the middle and that it hasn't separated your French wire and the um, the silk is in view. And then what we can do, we need to leave a little gap in between 